Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be doing a very interesting problem that is equilibrium point. Let's talk about the feedback of this problem. This problem is an application of prefix sum. Okay. But if you are not acquainted with prefix sum, I would teach you that. Okay. So now let's not read the problem statement today. I would just explain in a concise manner. It is told that we need to return a point where the sum of the left side of all the elements, elements of elements that is residing on the left side and the elements which is residing on the right side, the sum of them should be equal equal and if it is that then it is an equilibrium point. Okay. Let us see the sample test case and it would make more sense. The very first given sample test case is 1, 3, 5, 2 and 2. So let's see the very first value itself that is 1. The sum on this side is 0, the sum on this side is 3, plus 5 that is 8, 8 plus 2 that is 10, 10 plus 2 that is equals to 12. So 0 and 12 does not match. Then we have the sum from here we have 1 and this is the value 5 plus 2 7, 7 plus 2 that is equal to 9. 1 is not equal to 9. Then we have equal to 5, 1 plus 3 and we have something like 4, 2 plus 2 then we have 4. So the third index is the value where we have the sum on the left hand side and right hand side as equal. So we need to return the one indexing of it. Okay, one indexing means that the indexing would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but one based indexing would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is why the answer to this is 3 itself. Okay, so now the very next one is 1. Okay, so the sum on the left hand side and the sum on the right hand side is 0. Okay, that is why this is the thing. Okay. So now let us see that how really we can build up the solution for this. A very brute force approach would be that for a current point i, okay, let's say for a given point i, okay, let's say this is the given point i. So we would do a loop from 0 till the value of i minus 1. And then we would loop from this side and this would be from i plus 1 till the value of n minus 1. And that would solve the purpose. This would be equal to the left sum. This would be equal to the right sum. And if that is the value, that would be my solution. Okay. But a problem resides here. The problem is that for each element, we are calculating the sum of n minus 1 element in total. So for one element, if we are doing n operation, ignoring the constants. So multiplying n on both sides, because we are doing for n elements, it would be n square operations. Okay. And that is not the intended time complexity as well as the number of constant is 10 to the power 5. 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 5. Bases are same powers would get added 10 to the power 10. And it is greater than 10 to the power 8. So this would give a TLE. Okay. So now we need to optimize this. When we are trying to optimize this, we try to think that what is taking more time. Okay. More time is taken to have the sum from left and right. Okay, so to have the sum from left and right, so we are given a static array. Okay, we are given a static array and we need to operate on sum. These are the two symptoms that tell us that this problem is of prefix sum. Okay. The elements of the array are not changing and we need to operate on sum. This conclusion gave me the intuition that I need to use prefix sum at this point. So now we can simply use a prefix sum at this point and calculate the sum from left and right. 
and then we can implement this okay so knowledge of prefix sum is required at this point if you don't know prefix sum consider learning this and then coming to this point so now let us write a prefix sum at this point so what we would really do is we would first have a long long p of n whatever be the type of a would be the type of prefix sum and then we would say that p of 0 is equals to a of 0 the first element is equals to the next element okay and then we would start from the second index for int i is equals to 1 i is less than n and i plus plus and then we would say p of i is equals to p of i minus 1 and a of i that is previous calculated value plus the current value of the array and now this is the value of prefix sum now we would design a function which would take the prefix sum input which would take lnr and it would tell me the sum from that so now and here we would just pass lnr 0 to i minus 1 and i my i plus 1 to n minus 1 and that would solve the purpose so now what we would have is we would have the return type as long long okay and in this we would just simply say qr that is query and here we would get the value of l and r okay and then we would have something like int long long p and then we would have something like int n okay so now i would what i would do is i would say long long answer is equals to p of r now if l is greater than 0 okay then only we would subtract p minus is equals to p of l minus 1 okay now this is how you do calculate the sum from l to 1 but there are some added constraints for our safety and we would explain that later now at this point what i would really do is for int i is equals to 0 i is less than n and i plus plus and at this point i would initialize int answer is equals to minus 1 why because if the answer is not updated we need to return minus 1 okay so now we would say long long left sum l sum is equals to qr of qr of 0 to i minus 1 comma q comma n okay and long long r sum is equals to q r of i plus 1 comma n minus 1 comma q comma n okay now we would say if l sum is equals to equals to r sum then we would simply return the current index plus 1 because we are having 0 index and we need to return 1 index so we would just add 1 to it else if we are not able to return from either of this we would return the answer so now this is correct but there are two small things that i want to tell you the small thing is that if you observe when i would be equal to 0 i minus 1 would be 0 minus 1 that is negative okay and here p of minus 1 would give you a segmentation call index out of bound okay the very next thing is when i is equals to n minus 1 this would i plus 1 would be equal to n and p of n okay would be equal to again long value so here we can just have a check that here we would say long long answer is equals to zero okay so now at this point we would say if r is less than zero okay if r is less than zero then we would 
return zero this is the first condition that can happen now if r is less than zero then we would have this if i plus one so n minus one and this is already if l is greater than zero we are subtracting the value of n and this won't do any hindrance to us and this is fine so now let's just compile it and see how many errors are we making Q was not declared. Okay, this value is equals to P. The perfect sum. Yep. Okay, so I forgot to return the answer at this point. So now let us just compile it and see. Yep, we are getting correct result. and yes we were able to solve this problem so this was just an application of prefix sum so if you are not still not familiar with prefix sum consider learning it and then coming back to this video and this problem would be a cakewalk for you that's it for today thank you and have a nice day